Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sonnet with Sonnet's Garden Blooms, and I wanna thank you all for stopping by. Now in today's video, we are continuing on with flipping items to decorate my studio. I have been in the North Woods of Wisconsin for a week, and I'm back, and I wanted to try to finish more items because I wanna get this place decorated, Unfortunately, I got three items done, or fortunate, I guess, you guys. Um, well, here you can see one. Uh, I can't wait to show you what I flipped today. And if you haven't been to my channel before, thanks for stopping by as well. And what you're gonna find is a lot of DIYs, thrift hauls, thrift flips. I like to bring you along in the day in the life of a small business owner. Uh, over on my Facebook channel. I've been showing you a lot of behind the scenes. Uh, so if uh, you haven't done that yet, go over and follow me over there. Um, if this is the type of channel that you do like, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, uh, turn on your bell notifications so that every Monday and Friday when I do release a video, you'll be notified. And I hope you enjoy today's video and I can't wait to hear what y'all think. For project one, if you remember, I picked up this globe and for starters, I am going to paint the base black and then I am also going to take the actual globe and I am going to paint it with vintage linen by DIY. And we are going to do the same type of technique that I did on the last globe. So I am going to decoupage the globe itself. Uh, so anytime you are using decoupage paper, you do need to have a white background. It just makes the paper pop that much more. And what I'm going to do here is I am going to apply two coats of paint, uh, let them dry very thoroughly, and then we are going to start uh, with the decoupage paper. So I am using uh, this recycled decoupage paper and this is I think roughly the third time that I have done decoupage and you awesome viewers out there have been really helping me with a lot of the steps. Uh, so one of the tips was to tear the paper and not actually cut it with the scissors. So that was my first problem I did the first time around is I did a lot of cutting and you guys are all correct. It blends a whole lot better when you tear it versus cutting. So the other thing too, it's much easier to decoupage when you're on a flat surface. So what I discovered from doing my last globe is I just tear it into smaller sections. And uh, what I liked about this paper that I am using is it has like a lot of chunks or sections to it so different um, it all goes together but so when I tear it up and put it all over the globe it looks like it was all kind of meant to be that way so I am using liquid patina by DIY and I really like this to do my decoupage um, other people use Mod Podge or whatever you like to use, um, but this is what I have found works the best for me. Um, so I put down a nice even coat. Um, the one thing too about um, the globe that I should take note, and I don't know if you noticed it right from the beginning, it has many raised areas, so it was a little bit more difficult to, to kind of get everything to stick. Um, what I, or well, when I say stick, I mean like really get it to go completely flat. Um, so I did use the brush for that. I had no tearing. So the first two times around, I did have a bit of a tearing. And from what I understand is I overworked it. So I did not do that here. Uh, the one thing, I was out in my studio, I did not bring any saran wrap with me, but from what I understand, you guys say the saran wrap works wonders. So I'm just using the brush this time around, and I am going to just work in areas, and I'm going to continue on placing just randomly all over the globe. 
so I let that top half dry and this is as far as I've gotten and then now I flipped it over and we are going to work on the next section or the other half of the globe. Uh, what I also learned the first time I did the globe, I tried to do the whole thing at once and that was a big no-no. So um, when you're doing a globe, I would do half and half and then just let it dry very thoroughly before you reattach it to your globe holder. Um, and then I, again, I just continue on on this side and just work my way all around um, and doing the exact same thing that I did uh, with the first half of the globe. And I'm loving how this is all turning out. Uh, the one question that I do have for you guys, and I'd love to hear your response, once you see the globe completely done, do you think I should add any color to it? Whether it be with like a transfer, just adding little bits of transfer here and there. Should I take a stamp and add like green? Should I take like aviary and just pops a green? Or um, the other paper that I use has like some oranges. Should I add some of that or should I just leave as is? So I'd love to hear what you guys all think. Um, I'm really torn on this because my first gut instinct was to add a little bit of color. But then as I'm looking at it, I'm liking it. So I want to hear from you. For project two, I did pick up this S a while ago, and this was one of the items that I had sitting in my stash. I knew I wanted to include it in my studio. I am going to take the same paper that I used on the top of my rolling cart, and we are going to decoupage that paper on this S. So again, I am going to put white um, uh, as a base, and I'm going to apply two coats of white to this, and we're gonna let it dry really good, and then we're gonna come back and we are going to add the paper. So now that it is completely dry, here's the paper that we are using and I'm flipping it over and I'm just tracing on the back side the S. So I just take a pen, trace it out, uh, then I take a scissors and cut it out and then we are going to apply it with the liquid patina. So now that it's cut out, I have it kind of set here so you can see what it's going to look like. We are, like I said, using liquid patina. So I just flip it over uh, and then I'm going to apply the liquid patina to the entire uh, top of the S. And I'm just going to do a nice even layer. Um, many times with decoupage paper, you want to work in smaller sections. I felt like I could cover this all and then just lay it down um, in one swoop and I think it worked fine. So I just made sure that it was nice and smooth prior to putting the paper on. Once I got the paper on, I just smoothed it out with my hand. I felt like uh, this type of paper that I've seen people use as like decoupage, um, I know that in one of my last videos, somebody commented that it really wasn't decoupaging. It was just gluing paper on. And I guess that's what I'm doing with this uh, because it's more of a wrapping type of paper. It was nice and thick and it went on really nice. Um, I was able to smooth it out uh, so there was no wrinkles right from the start. So after it dried, I just went around the edges with uh, my sanding block and I made, there was just a, 
a few areas that had a little bit of an overhang and I just went around and sanded those off um, and I am absolutely loving how this turned out. I think it just adds so much and it's going to tie in so nicely too with uh, the table or the actual rolling cart top. For project three, I did pick up this Peterborough basket and it was only $5.99. Uh, the issue here is there was a quite a bit of staining inside. So it looks like somebody used this to hold their fruit and their fruit must have rotted. And uh, I got a lot of that after math stain in there. So um, I even was like, oh, is this like a chunk still on here? And so I started scraping clean that all out um, and then I what I decided um, I was going to do is we are going to take that same paper and we are going to line the bottom to hide all those imperfections. I am using the DIY white or um, vintage linen and uh, I did uh, the first coat and as I was doing the first coat I'm like maybe I should have clear coated it because instantly I'm like, oh gosh, I bet it's going to bleed through. So right at the end, as I was finishing up, it did start bleeding through. So I let that dry. I applied a coat of clear coat, like a poly to it to try to seal it all in. And then I redid the another coat of vintage linen and it bled through again. So I went ahead and I clear coated it again and it bled through just a tiny bit, but it looked like it was pretty sealed. And I thought, oh, I'll put that paper over it. And even after we put the paper on, on through the paper, there was a slight area where you could see just a tiny bleed through. So uh, if you guys have any suggestions on what I should have used um, instead of poly, should I've used a shellac? Would that have been better? Um, I've never had this experience where even after, like once I seal it, it typically there's not bleed through. So um, I'm asking you guys uh, for your help on this one because in, I mean, I'm hoping I don't buy anything else that has um, fruit damage to it, but if I would, what would you recommend? So now that we're letting the inside dry, you can kind of see briefly where that um, bleed through is happening. I had clear coated it. I am painting the entire base of this basket and the inside edges. We're doing aviary and I'm applying just one coat. I decided that I wanted a little bit of the basket color to pop through here and there. I thought that would be kind of fun since in many cases uh, when you're painting a basket, you can't get it perfect anyway. So I thought more of like a rustic look. Uh, so I went through and painted just one coat of aviary over the entire basket and I'm really loving the look of it. Uh, the one thing I did not like about this basket is, and I, you guys are probably going to roast me, but I did not like the red and the blue um, pieces throughout. So it did not go with my decor. And I thought that the aviary looked so much better. Now, after I let this dry very thoroughly, I went back uh, with Big Top and I applied one coat of Big Top to the entire piece. 
Uh, at some point, I thought I was recording that, uh, but I must not have hit the record button. So I know you've all seen me clear coat before and paint before, so it's nothing new, but I just wanted to make note of that. And it totally seals the whole piece by adding a top coat because DIY's paint can reactivate if you do not seal it. So now we are going to cut the inside piece for this basket. And I am just using, um, just like I did with the S, I am just taking my pen and uh, creating a circle or a template from just going around it. And then we're gonna cut it out and we're gonna hope that it fits. And it pretty much, it was almost a perfect fit. So now we're going to use the liquid patina and we are going to use that to decoupage it down or to basically hold this piece in place and then apply um, the liquid patina over the top of it as well. Uh, for starters, I don't know what I was doing normally. <laughs> I just have to tell you guys, I woke up really early to finish this off and after I was applying the liquid patina to the actual paper, I'm like, what are you doing, Sonnet? So I then apply it to the actual white of the basket and then I lay down the paper. And even with adding the liquid patina to this paper and then applying it, um, it did not wrinkle at all. It All the wrinkles came out just perfect. So I was very happily surprised. And I should also tell you guys that if you watched my video where I did my rolling cart top and I had a lot of wrinkles in that, I want to let you know, and I don't know if I've mentioned this before or not, but those wrinkles, they actually all came out. So I was very surprised about that too. Like as it dried, it just smoothed right out. So very um, happy about that. But you can see here, I'm just putting it in and um, initially I don't have it exactly how I want it. So, um, but yes, I just straighten it all out and it fits perfect. And I love how this basket has turned out. So what was your favorite item? Honestly, I loved them all, but my most favorite was the basket, the turntable basket. I just love this. I think it's gonna work perfect for my paint. So I'm super excited about that. Um, Monday, we are going to just continue on with flipping items. I definitely want to get this done. Um, being gone for a week has really slowed me down <laughs> and I'm trying to play catch up right now. So I need to like really focus. Um, so this weekend I'm going to be working on Monday's video. Um, so flipping more items. I'm going live on Monday. So if you haven't yet followed me over on Facebook, go ahead, go over there, hit that follow button uh, because I am putting out a ton more content over there. So you're gonna find a lot more behind the scenes, um, just a lot more about me. Um, I can only do so much in a short video like this, uh, but if I'm posting over there a lot more, you're gonna find out a lot more about me. Uh, so go ahead and do that. Uh, I, my goal is to hit 10,000 followers by the end of the year. So let everyone know about it. Um, so if you have friends that love DIY, flipping, thrifting, uh, then you need to tell them about this channel and about me over on Facebook. So uh, I want you guys to have a great weekend and we will see you Monday for this video and my live over on Facebook. Bye.